How's it going, everybody? Estas here. So the stock market was an absolute bloodbath today. Not much more to say other than that. We're going to end the video right here. I'll see you guys later. Catch you all in the next one. Just kidding. We got to talk. We got to break down what happened. The S&P went down 0.9%. Dow down half a percent. The NASDAQ 100 down a whopping 1.2%. And I don't get it, but somehow the Russell went up 0.2%. So today we're going to break down some stocks, some charts, my thoughts on the market, plus more. So sit back, relax, smash that like button, check my Patreon now, link down below, and let's get right into the video. So we can clearly see SPY had a rough day and we took out the lows, <clears throat> excuse me guys, not only from yesterday, but from the past couple of weeks. You guys can see SPY closed at 441.40 and now we're down down even more. We're down under 441 in the aftermarket session, and it looks like it could get worse. I mean, at this point in time, the bull trap that we called out yesterday and the day before ended up being right. It ended up being a bull trap. You know, we saw a nice rally two days ago and yesterday, but both of those rallies, we failed breaking out of key resistances. Resistance number one being the 180 SMA on this 20-day chart and the double top resistance from, I believe this was Monday, Tuesday at about 448, 448.50. We failed breaking out of both of those levels and we ended up seeing a big drop in the pre-market today, you guys can see, um, well, actually, we saw a bit of a pump in the pre-market, and then we dumped at market open very aggressively. I mean, we saw a pump from about 4.44.30. That was at 6.45 a.m. on the East Coast. We ended up rallying up to about 4.45.40. That was at 8.20 a.m. on the East Coast. And then as the markets open at 4.45.60, it was just an onslaught from then. The markets got slaughtered, and then again we closed, like I said, at 441.40. So we took the lows out. It's looking ugly, and at this point in time, sure, we could go down a bit lower, but don't be surprised if we see a relief rally. I think we will at some point next week. I think we will. Um, whether uh, SPY goes down from 441, where it is now, maybe down to 438, then we see the relief rally. Or from where we are now, we see a push to 445, um, which would be the relief rally. I think ultimately we will get a relief rally, but I'm not too convinced that we're out of the woods yet. I think we could see more red after that relief rally. So, what do you guys think? Did you do anything today? Did you buy anything? Did you sell anything? Are you still hoarding cash? Let me know in the comments. And I made a video earlier today of two stocks that I actually bought today. Go check it out after this one, of course. Um, we went over two stocks I bought in that video. Highly valuable. And before we talk about the stocks I want to talk about today, let's take a look at QQQ. Um, QQQ, like SPY, also took out the lows from not only yesterday, not only the previous day from yesterday, but from the past couple of weeks. Um, you guys can clearly see that. Now we're actually testing the 372 support from back in the end of August, about three weeks ago, and it also ended up being a bull trap. The two rallies we saw yesterday and on Wednesday ended up being bull traps. And did I not say that, guys? Did I not say... QQQ was A, a bull trap, we call that out, and B, that it could sell to 372, which is that 180 SMA support here on the four-hour chart. Not to toot my own horn, but we literally called this stuff out in the previous couple of videos, which again, that's why you got to subscribe. You got to subscribe, you got to hit that notification bell, and why not? You might as well hit the like button while you're at it if you are finding value in this video. So the markets... It, it was just a bloodbath overall. And like I said in the intro, I don't know how the Russell did well, um, but it looks like small caps had their uh, had their day today, even in the, in the sea of red that we saw overall. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments again, as always. And let's talk about some stocks now. Number one being Virgin Galactic. And I've said this before in many videos, 
and I'll mention it again now. It's funny. It looks like Virgin Galactic moves opposite to what the markets do. It's like a inverse ETF almost. Whenever the markets get slammed, Virgin Galactic is somehow up. I, I just don't get it. There's no explanation for it. I don't know why, but today Virgin Galactic went up 8% up about two dollars and let me see did i miss something maybe i just missed something and i'm an idiot um hmm let's see here nothing really is popping up on the live news tab so i'm just guessing it's moving up because the markets are going down I, I mean i don't know why else this would happen but we had a pretty nice move today and we broke over the 50 sma now we're about to test the 180 sma here on the four hour chart which you guys can clearly see has been resistance ever since um, July. So about almost eh, two, two and a half months now, we've struggled at this point, um, the 180 SMA. And I think if we start breaking out of there, momentum could start coming back on Virgin Galactic. I really think that's possible. So we're going to watch it for that exact reason. I'm going to put my alert at $28 per share right above that 180 moving average. So if we start breaking out of there, I'm going to get alerted and maybe we can catch a, uh, a short-term trade on this particular stock. And I got spammed in the comments by you guys, which please let me know in the comments any stocks you want me to talk about. I'm more than grateful. Um, I'd be more than happy to talk about them in these videos. Smile Direct Club, ticker symbol SDC. I think this one is floating around in the Wall Street Bets community. That's what I was seeing. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Uh, but this one, it's been breaking out. Today it had a 70 cent green day, which for a $6 stock, that is a very big green day. It had a 12% green day. And now we're starting to reverse trend. We're moving over the moving averages. I believe we're at a multi-month high uh, or, or we're testing multi-month, uh, multi-months high multi-month highs that is a tongue twister geez guys um we haven't been in the uh six seven dollar range since um june july so that's a good sign we're also like i said above moving averages and we're about to see a golden cross here so and on top of that geez look at that volume spike holy smokes let me see did we hit 100 million in volume today on sdc yeah, 138 million. Jeez. So I'm, I'm assuming, yes, this is in the Wall Street Bets community. Um, it's floating around there. So this could be a, an opportunity for you speculative guys out there or gals. I know a lot of girls, maybe not a lot of girls, but uh, some girls watch my videos out there. So if you guys out there want a more speculative play that's slowly gaining momentum, SDC could be for you. Now, do I own it? No, I don't. Maybe I will buy a little bit of it in the near-term future for fun, but I'm not going to put anything substantial in it. I'll be honest with you. I'll say it right now, uh, but who knows? Maybe if we see extra momentum kick in next week, more momentum, shall I say, this could be a pickup. So watch out for SDC, Smile Direct Club, and we had the cruise lines do well today. CCL ended up going up about 2%, a little bit under, a tad Ad bit under 2% on the day. And it looks like we're now pushing over the moving averages on the four hour chart, which is a good sign considering that is, uh, it has been resistance the past two ish weeks here. And now it looks like we confirm the pop out of the uh, resistances. We're holding a higher low on the bottom of this channel, uptrending channel at that. And I think this could end up filling the gap up towards 24, 50, 25, maybe even higher than that. And with earnings coming up, I just realized next week, next Friday, this might be one that rallies into earnings. It could definitely be a play for next week. RCL, which is a big competitor to CCL, Royal Caribbean Group, this one's well above both moving averages. It's been reversing. We have a golden cross as well, which is great. And we're noticing a clear-cut ascending triangle. You know, we've been uptrending ever since the middle of July, but we've seen a sticking point at $84, $85 since the end of August. And you can see we've gotten rejected there multiple, multiple times. So I'm thinking, okay, if we start seeing a leg up 
out of 85, so I'm going to put my alert right at 85. The ascending triangle might play out. We could see a nice breakout, and we could start pushing 88.90, which was the high point from the end of June. If that were to break, now we're talking 92, $95 per share. Um, you know, in, in the meantime here, so watch out for that. And now that I'm looking at Royal Caribbean's logo, this is completely off topic. I don't even know why I'm saying this right now, but this looks exactly like you guys know that energy drink, Rain, R E I G N. I don't know why I'm saying this, but look, uh, look here at the top left. If you guys know. Rain. This is off topic, I know. But this looks exactly like that logo. I don't know if there's some uh, lit litigation going on there, but I don't know, man. It looks like they copied the logo. But anyway, I could be wrong on that. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong thing. But yeah, it kind of looks very similar to that. But overall, RCL, watch out for the breakout here. ENPH, also known as end phase this one seems like it's holding the bottom of this downwards channel we're trading under the moving averages so keep that in mind if you don't like setups like this you might as well just skip 30 seconds down the line of this video but i think end phase the fact that it went up 2.6 percent today we're seeing some volume kick up a volume kick up and we're noticing buyer step in i think end phase could have a shot at filling the gap towards the moving averages, whether that's 170, 175, and even towards the top of this channel, downwards channel at about $178, $180 per share. That is where I'm thinking um, ENPH could end up going to. Um, and that could give it anywhere from $10, $12 more upside from here or about $10, $11, $12. Percent, And I've been getting a lot of questions on Beyond Meat. You guys, if you've looked at this stock, it's just been horrible. I mean, <laughs> other than that run up a couple months ago, pretty much almost a year ago, back in January, well, not a year ago, more like nine months ago, other than that run up from about... 120 to 227 this one's just been destroyed i mean it's gone from 227 down to about 106 now we saw a four percent green day we're at 113 dollars almost um and, and it's just been killed so i've been getting questions stas are you looking at beyond me you should cover beyond me here you go. I mean, this stock is clearly downtrending. We're seeing a death cross, and it's been downtrending ever since the end of June. And I was looking at this a couple weeks ago. You guys can see my old analysis here if I zoom in a bit. I was looking at this inverse head and shoulder, left shoulder head, right shoulder. But the second we broke under the neckline, which occurred at $125 per share, the inverse head and shoulder pretty much got scrapped at that point, um, and we continued the downtrend. So I'm really not looking at this until we start breaking back over 120, probably 125. Um, I believe that is where we could start seeing a reversal back up, especially once we start breaking um, above the moving averages again. So be mindful of that, guys. You know, Understand, if you buy Beyond Meat here, especially as a short-term trade, you're fighting the trend a bit, and I don't like fighting the trend when I'm looking at swing trades. Um, you know, it's just how I look at it. So keep your eyes on BYND, Beyond Meat, and let's see how far we are in this video. About 13 minutes in, and like, and like I, I asked you guys yesterday, do you want my videos 15, 17 minutes or over 20 minutes? Most of you guys said 15, 17 minutes, so I guess that is what I'm going to be shooting for uh, from here on out. And other than those stocks, guys, we had really not much else that was green. I mean, we had, well, I guess we had some other ones. Tattooed Chef did well, which the calls I sold expired worthless. I'm probably going to write new calls next week at some point. Um, we had a rival push over $13. That had a 4% day. Alibaba had a bit of a relief rally today. We had Neo up over 1%, Pinterest up 1%. But other than those stocks, it was a lot of red out there. Um, and, and, you know, it might continue, like I said in the beginning of this video. So I'm going to wrap it up here. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Did you buy anything today? Sell anything? Are you just holding cash, waiting till next week? Which none of those are wrong. I mean, 
it's all up to you what you guys do in these markets, guys, as always. Uh, but let me know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. And check out my Patreon if you guys want my real-time buys, sells, call-outs, morning update videos, private Discord access. You guys want to know when I'm making moves, whether it's long-term trades, options, all of that's on Patreon, link down below, or you guys can go to StockSurfest.com slash Patreon. Make sure to also get your 30 bucks from M1 Finance or two stocks from Webull. Those are linked right down below. And check out my video from earlier if you want to see what two stocks I ended up adding positions to today. Brand new positions. Check out my video from earlier. I'll catch you guys there. Thanks for watching again. As always, keep crushing the markets. Stay safe out there, guys. Peace out.